Okay, so we're back again with two staffs today, all part of the Creation Club content, or free as part of the anniversary stuff. The staff of Azuki and the staff of Shiagaf. I've said them terribly, I know, I'll carry on saying the wrong stuff. Uh, are they good? I don't think they're that great, but I reckon some of you guys are going to say you love using them with a particular build, so make sure you put that in the comment section down below. Effectively, one of them freezes and paralyzes people for 15 seconds, and the other one can yeet people off, give you a ward, and trap their souls. So maybe that one's a bit better. Let's go. So the staff of Azuki, you pretty much have to go below a white run. You should find a cave that you can see, and it's guarded by a few smugglers. Obviously, just depending on what level you are, it shouldn't be too much of a problem taking care of these bandits. There is another piece of quest stuff here as well, smuggler's notes, so make sure you don't get confused between the two. One of them you'll find on a table, and the other one you'll find on these crates. So make sure you read the one on the crate, and that will start the staff of Hazuki. We effectively got to go and stop an ambush from a orc. Now I wasn't too sure of whether or not you might be able to persuade the orc not to do the ambush, or whether or not you could do this a bit peacefully. I just ran up to him and started wailing on him. It does say there you can actually pickpocket him, so maybe if you're a bit quick on the mark, you might be able to do that, and you might save this guy for maybe another quest later. But otherwise, he shouldn't be too much hassle. The guards will just stand by calling you a hero, and he should have the orders, the sledger, that you need to go to the next location. We need to go and fight a pretty powerful necromage at Brittleshin Pass. It's really not that far off. These are all pretty close to Whiterun, but I would say the actual mage itself is pretty tough. It's going to summon a bunch of different deads, undead ones. So take care with this mission when you get in here. Also, the staff of Zuki, as I've mentioned, can yeet you off and it gets used against you, which you'll see quite a bit. There is a trap of a soul stone here, so make sure you take that out. And then, yeah, it'll be guarded by a bowman at the very start. Once you're taking care of him, you'll have a couple of normal skeletons to deal with, and they shouldn't be too much trouble either. Then it's a case of just going through until you get to the main chamber. There is a chest that's got some stuff in it as well on the sides, so don't forget about that. And I reckon if you're really super sneaky, you might have a better chance of actually completing this a lot quicker. As you can see, there's actually two targets to take care of. One of them's just sacrificed one of these fellow necromages. And welcome to Keepy Uppy. He pretty much is going to do this to you a lot. So make sure you are maybe using something at range to take him out first, or maybe some fire spells. Honestly, it got a bit tedious having to do this. Uh, I was getting wailed upon by his summons as well. So yeah, if you've got anything that can turn the tide of battle with these summons, that would be a good idea too. I try not to recommend builds and stuff because there's so many different ways you could handle it. But yeah, anything to banish the undead could be good if it does work on some of these guys. I did end up switching to some actual proper fireballs because I was just getting yeeted too much. And as you can see, they do the trick much, much better, keeping them from range. And that's pretty much it. Defeat them and she will have the staff of Hazuki on her body. Or one of them will, for sure. So I think this one's actually the best out of the two. It will give you 40 points of protection as a ward whenever you use it. If someone dies, the target dies within 60 seconds, it will fill a soul piece, but it's got to be quite a big soul gem. Obviously, depending on what you're going up against, I guess. And yes, it does yeet people off. So actually a really good one as more of a defensive minded kind of build alongside another weapon that's going to do a bit more offensive stuff once you've knocked them over. And I really like the effects from it when you actually use it and fire it off in the wilderness. You can see it's got a nice little purple hue. Although it does have this weird shimmer that's always there. And in first person, honestly, it made me feel a bit sick. It was like I was watching a motion blur the whole time. So yeah, only third person would I use this. Next up, we need to head over to Solheim. Now you can get this without having to complete a bunch of quests for the dude that lives in Tel Miner. You can do it if you've unlocked my watch. But first, we need to find pretty much the inn here at Rockwell, Rock Drake, whatever the hell it's called. Just off the docks to the left hand side, you should find it. It's just opposite and it should have a little guard outside it too. I still really haven't explored all the Dragonborn quests in this next new one I've done. Inside the wretched netch, you're going to find a note pinned to a keg. You can see it on the left hand side. Take the note and the fork, now we've got to go and find ourselves some netches. One of them's way up north, so you're going to have to go all the way up there, but it will show you on the map marker when you ask to see the quests. Skull Village is the closest point for me. Eventually you'll find the Mass Effect knockoff, I can't remember what that creature was called, but I'm pretty sure it had the same sort of shape, and yeah, take it down and you'll get a body piece from it. 
Branch of the Tree of Shades. Apparently you can also make Netch armor as part of the Creation Club content, so I'm gonna look into that and that'll probably be another video. And the next one's a little bit closer to where you just was at Raven Rock. That's the name of it. Head past the docks and where you saw them buildings in the first place, and you should see it across the way in a little island. Take it down and you've now nearly got all the ingredients you need. You will also need some heart stones and as long as you've not used them up that you've already got at my watch you should be able to do this pretty easily. However if you haven't unlocked my watch or you don't own that piece of content as it is a creation club piece content maybe for some reason you've only bought these staff ones because you're really just into magic then so you can go all the way over to here tell Mifflin and craft it there once you've completed some quests. You basically got to become Nelof's little bitch for a little while doing stuff and become his steward before you have access to his enchanter. It shouldn't take too long but considering my watch is free to get once you've got the anniversary edition and you don't need any money for it to actually buy it in game just sim simply take out a chorus of showing you guys how to access it already. If you haven't seen that video go and check it out I think my watch is one of the best times you can actually get as part of the anniversary edition of the game. With the ingredients you've already got, you should be able to craft the Sheograph with the branches and two heart stones. And that's it, you've crafted the staff that I just cannot say correctly to save my life. As ever, a lot of these quest items look great, but sometimes they're not that great. This staff will basically paralyze anyone for 15 seconds. It can be useful, but it only works against certain creatures. I do love to look at this and I reckon for more specialist builds you could definitely get some use out of this if you're really going for that vibe of being a real mage, dark mage at least. Probably not the best place to test this out, I went to Fort Snowhawk where there happened to be a bunch of necromancers so if you're looking for one of the new robe sets you might get lucky and find at least one of the more common ones here. It did work, you can actually paralyze a lot of these guys as you can see, that's it, 15 seconds out of the way, but obviously it doesn't work on the undead I don't think. It's a pretty powerful staff so it does use up quite a bit of charge very quickly so you are going to need a lot of soul gems to really replenish it. Using it in combination with the staff of Azuki and yeah an interesting one, probably again not the best for this situation but effectively it meant I was giving myself a shield trying to trap some souls from some of these mages if I did actually kill them, obviously not skeletons because it doesn't work. The Staff of Suzuki has got the best thing ever in yeeting people off of cliffs. So there we go, as I said I think they're still both a little bit useless, maybe the Suzuki one's a little bit better or maybe if you can use it against certain high level creatures you'll have to test it out if they don't resist it, it could be good using the sheer buff one. Uh, otherwise it's definitely more specialist, maybe that's the right word, a specialist set of staffs that I'm sure some of you guys will really enjoy. Let me know that's what they're for, the comments, whether or not you're going to be using these, what kind of build will you be using them with and is there anything else I should have mentioned. Until next time, laters.